Oof, this looks different. Man. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Let's get some oil pressure in this bad boy. Okay, the road to getting it running. I have spent a lot of bit of time going through and figuring out the length of each connector where it needs to go, which you saw that in the last video. But I just finished tidying all this up, um, bundling it together, oil pressure sensors in there plugged in, and the ones we're not using are zip tied up back here, out of the way, the rest are to length, and then it's all together nice and neat and coming out these are going out to the front and whatnot so i'm pretty much finishing this up intake's about to go on making sure all the coil and stuff is good before i bolt the intake on i mean this stuff is accessible once the intake goes on but it's a lot harder to get to so i want to make sure everything's perfect now rather than later it turned out pretty good though i'm pretty happy with how clean that looks minus the injector stuff i don't know how i'm gonna route those good yet we'll see so here it is with the intake on. I know I was showing you kind of how I was running the wires and I'll show it again. I'll pull the intake off and show you how I did the injectors. I kind of fought with the injectors for a while just cause the primary injectors are in the main harness and the other ones in the secondary harness. So I can't attach the injector harnesses to the intake like I would like to, but I finally got it all routed. I got, you know, two of the injectors coming from each, you know, little um, opening here and coming through what's also tough is they have these pigtails because the harness has different connectors than what his injector are so it took a while to make this look clean but now that it's done i feel like it looks really really good I'm, I'm happy with it the intake fits again i was having trouble getting the intake on so we got that done and it's looking really good i'm happy with it so we'll keep on rock and rolling we're hoping to have some oil pressure here pretty soon on this thing uh, getting it close a little side note he loves carbon, so I thought I'd throw this in here. Uh, PST drive shaft showed up. They uh, custom make these carbon drive shafts. They do them pretty quick too. We got this one in under two weeks from the time we ordered delivered to my house. They offer a lifetime warranty on these as well. Um, it's only like an extra hundred bucks and you can get a lifetime warranty on this. So if anything ever happens to it, they replace it. So really cool. I'm gonna get this put in real quick, make sure all the measurements were good and it fits and everything looks good. Fast forward to, I don't know, it's been a couple weeks. I haven't done much last week. I got uh, a little injury. Anyways, we'll talk about all that later. So you can see he had the exhaust polished um, at a place down in Lubbock. Took a little longer than expected, but got done. I think it looks pretty good. So we are finishing up wiring and plumbing everything. See, I got the fuel tank done, put the return. It may look kind of bad right now, like it's just sticking out there, but the fender comes through right here and it's kind of tucked in there. So it actually, it doesn't look bad when the fender's on there right now. It looks like it's just kind of hanging out. So don't worry about that. And then this one's going to be the vent once I finish that up. Um, other than that, yeah, oil pressure time. So I got everything plumbed and put together. O2's in, vacuum lines run. Um, I downloaded FuelTech software on my computer and hooked up to it and kind of went through a diagnosis procedure. Um, I was having problems at first. I wasn't getting any spark, figured that out. And then I had a dead cylinder, figured that out. Just, you know, typical new build problems, I'd say, when you're trying to start it up. But I got the fuel system primed up. I think we are ready for some startup. So let's... uh. Kind of go through this and test and i'm actually going to show you some stuff on the fuel tech as well maybe it'll help someone i'm learning fuel tech as i go through this so it was good pieces for me to learn okay i wanted to show you guys what i was talking about on the testing when i first got it going i wasn't having any spark and um we can kind of talk about that but i want to show what fuel tech does i don't know if you'll be able to see this too good these are uh output so they have a lot of stuff but these are all the outputs on fuel tech and you can go in and test those so if you listen closely here's the little test button see you're clicking so that's the injectors clicking and you can go through and test 
all of these to make sure all your wiring's good. Same with the uh, coils. So they have an RPM activated output that turns on the coils. And listen, I had this unplugged. This is why it wasn't working. But if you listen, when I click this, you can hear the relays clicking on inside the car. So what was happening is it wasn't giving power to the coil relay, so it wasn't getting spark. And that's why the car wouldn't originally start. Super cool that they have all this. Um, uh, Holly does not. So anyways, moving on. But I also want to show you the diagnostic panel. This is really cool. So this shows you the raw data, which I showed you this briefly on the actual thing, but this shows you the raw data of all the sensors. So what's cool is like I had a misfire originally. Well, I came in here and looked at the EGTs and I instantly saw that oh cylinder number six the egt is 80 degrees everything else is 500 degrees so i quickly found it um and it also shows you like all your injector stuff the raw data shows you the voltage from all your sensors it's super cool um you can actually go on here and you know bear with me i don't know this stuff that good yet but you can see the dashboard um that's like the exact same thing that's on the display you can see that on um here and the connectivity is actually really good between the two and i don't know I, i've been really impressed with fuel tech so far car started up good i'm pretty happy with it okay uh, a little later i had a little bit of a um First start mishap is what we'll call it, but uh, I edited that out so you don't get to see it anyways. But here we are. Um, let's uh, let's start it up for the first time, right? First first start ever. First start, no big deal. So last thing is uh, there's a lot of rumors about primer pumps and this and that. I'm not going to get into it too much. I'm just going to say this has a front mounted mechanical fuel pump. It's behind the oil pump. This has an external wet sump oil pump. And then right behind that is a mechanical fuel pump. And then it has a front tank as well. It's hard lined from the tank to the fuel pump. Um, but a lot of people say you need a primer pump. These things won't start or build fuel pressure without a primer pump. Well, let me show you. So it's been sitting for a while. It has no, um, it doesn't have any check valves or drain back valves or anything. It's just all wide open. So, and this is how it goes. So fuel pressure, you can keep an eye on it. It's right here. Um, but yeah, so let me crank it over and let's see how long it takes to start up. <laughs> me I don't know like I almost think that starts quicker than some of my electric pump cars did oh, I like it it works good don't listen to internet rumors okay so that's gonna wrap up this one just a pretty quick video on getting this started I know there's not a ton of wiring in this video but it's kind of the next step in the wiring series you know normally you know get the main wiring laid out get everything good and if you have an engine it's ready to start like I like to start it and make sure all that wiring is functional and good to go. I am um, going to do like the output and input harness next on the car. On Field Tech, those are kind of separate. I think I talked about this in previous ones, but I'm gonna do like the, the shock sensors and the coolant pressure and all those. Those will all be on the input harness. And then on the output, the boost controller, trans brake and bump and all that stuff will be on the output. So we're gonna do those two harnesses separate. Um, but I wanted to get the engine running, so this was kind of the next step. Yeah, I had some plumbing I needed to finish up and, you know, odds and ends here, here and there, but I kind of feel like this was the next step in the wiring. So it starts, I'm really happy with it. Seems all the wiring, the Fuel Tech Pro harnesses, everything's good. Not that I was doubting that. 
I kind of figured it was all going to be good, but yeah, really impressed and happy with how everything's gone with the fuel tech, the controls, the software, um, the testing functionality. There's so many cool things about the fuel tech software. I've been really happy with it um, and really happy with their pro harnesses. Top notch quality, everything worked. I can't speak highly enough about it. I've been, I've been really impressed. So you guys hang tight. I'm going to be doing the inputs and outputs harness on the next video. And we're going to be going to Sonic and getting some ice cream in this thing real soon.